What we're going to be going over here are stock dividends and we're going to compare small stock dividends to large stock dividends and really the difference is of course the number of shares that we issue here for the dividend but it's also where we capitalize a retained earnings and we're going to either capitalize it at the market value here for a small stock dividend or at the par value of the stock here for a large stock dividend and we'll get into that here. So this is what we're going to have for example here. Corporation A is going to have these equity accounts. They're going to have a common stock. They're going to have 120,000 shares outstanding at a $5 per share par value for a total amount here of 600000 Then they have additional paid in capital common stock here at 950000 And then they have retained earnings at $2 million. So their total stockholder equity is going to be $3,550,000. Okay, so let's start with our small stock dividend here. And now that's where you issue a stock dividend that's less than 20 to 25% of the common stock outstanding. In this case, we're going to have a 5% stock dividends decline. Declared, and when it's declared here, the market value per share here of our common stock is $40. So this is a key amount here when we're working with our small stock dividend here. And in both cases here, either large or small, you're going to increase your common shares outstanding as the, uh, the dividend on the percentage of your dividend here. Okay, so let's look at what we're talking about with this small stock dividend here. So this is where we're going to be capitalizing part of the retained earnings. That is, we're going to transfer at the fair value or the market value here of our stock that of stock dividend. That's going to be transferred into the common stock. And when we're talking about our stock dividend here, a small stock dividend, again, that was 20 to 25 percent of the common stock that's outstanding. And if it's less than that, we have a small stock dividend. In our case, we had that 5% stock dividend. That was at 120,000 shares that are outstanding. At the 5%, that was the 6,000 shares here that are going to be distributed to the shareholders. And again, this is the case here where the shareholders are going to pay nothing for this stock here. That is, the corp is just going to issue its own stock to the shareholders for nothing here. That's going to be their dividend that they receive. Now, let's go and look at our accounts here. So we're starting with our retained earnings. Again, this is where we're going to capitalize it. That is, we're going to transfer from retained earnings here, the um, value of that stock into the paid in capital here of common stock. So looking at our retained earnings first here, of course, we had our 2000 or $2 million here credit sitting in retained earnings, and it's going to be reduced here by $240,000 here. So that is the key here is that you have 120,000 shares outstanding at the 5% dividend rate here times the market price here per share of $40 per share here. That equates to 240,000. Then the next other key item here is how we transfer it over into common stock. So we, we are going to first look at our par amount here. So we're looking at our par account here in our common stock. That was those 6,000 shares here at $5 per share that we would increase our common stock here by $30,000. Okay, so the par value does not decrease here. It remains here at $5 per share. But the par amount here for your common stock is increasing by 30000 So we've accounted for 30000 of the 240000 here being transferred. The remainder would go to additional paid in capital for your common stock. And we're going to credit that here for 210000 Again, key here is you're working off that market price per share here. So you had a $40 per share here market price less the $5 power amount. So we have those 6,000 shares of stock dividend uh, that equates to $210,000. Okay, so we've taken care of that. We have 30,000 of the 240,000 being transferred. 30,000 is going to our common stock power amount here and the remaining 210,000 goes into additional paid in capital for our common stock. So that's the key here. Working with the small stock dividend, you work off this mar per share market price here, and then you split it between the your par amount here, common stock, based on the par value stays the same per share, and then the balance goes into additional paid in capital here for common stock. So, what we uh, two things that we want to look at here. So we increase the outstanding shares here by 6,000. That's the key point. Our st outstanding shares here sitting with our shareholders is increased by 6,000. So we 120,000 plus the 6,000 dividends. So now we got 126,000 shares outstanding. So that's what our stock dividend did in terms of the number of shares that is sitting out here. Again, that was that 5% dividend. The other thing we want to look at is our shareholders' equity does not change here. Uh, we just transferred it between our returned earnings here 
uh, our earned capital into our contributed capital here. So just looking at it here, the share uh, holders' equity does not change. We had a reduction in our retained earnings here by 240000 and then we've increased our common stock and our additional paid in capital. 30000 here to common stock par, 210000 to additional paid in capital. So they just balanced each other out here. Reduction in retained earnings uh, was balanced here with the increase in common stock and additional paid in capital. Okay, so that takes care of our small stock dividend. Just remember, market value here, and based on, it's based on the market value uh, per share here at the time of that uh, declared the dividends declared, and then it goes into your common stock here at its par amount plus then the additional amount goes into additional paid in capital. Again, depending on the market price here. Okay, so now we've taken care of our small stock dividend. Now let's go look at our large stock dividend. Okay, so for our large stock dividend, that's where your, your dividend here is greater than that hurdle rate here of 20 to 25 percent of the common stock that's outstanding. In this case, we're going to have a 30 percent stock dividend and dividends declared, and the market price here is going to be $40 per share. This isn't going to come into play as we look at it. Okay, so for our stock dividend here, we had 120,000 shares outstanding times the 30 percent dividend a, stock, a dividend here in stocks that we're giving that's going to be 36,000 shares here of stock dividend that are going to be distributed to the current shareholders of the, of the company again we increase the number of common stock shares outstanding as a dividend here so that's what the stockholders are going to get again we're going to capitalize part of our retained earnings uh, and that's where we're going to look here again the same thing as with our small stock dividend but in this case we're going to transfer it at the par value of the stock and there's going to be no increase in the additional paid in capital here on based on that uh, based on that stock dividend again our stock dividend here is greater than it's going to be 30 percent here and remember that was the 36,000 shares based on the fact that we had 120,000 outstanding 30% stock dividend, that's going to be those 36,000 shares. So here with 30% stock dividend is greater than that 20 to 25% uh, hurdle rate here that we have of the common stock that's outstanding. And this is again a large stock dividend. Okay, so same thing. Let's just look at it here. Corporate is going to issue its own stock here to the shareholders. Again, the shareholders pay nothing for it. This is going to be their dividend that they receive here from the company. Okay, and then this is the key point here. We can go through that here. This is, again, we're going to transfer our retained earnings, a portion of it here, to our paid-in capital account here, common stock. And this is the key here. So if we're looking at our retained earnings here, that's going to be decreased here by 180,000. We have the 2 million sitting in here. It's going to be decreased here by 180,000. So this was where the difference comes in between the small and the large stock dividend. Again, our transfer here is going to be between retained earnings and our to our common stock account. So this is where it comes in. So we take the 120,000 shares that are outstanding here times the 30% stock dividend at the $5 per share par value. Before we were working off that per share market value here, but for this large stock dividend, well, the small stock dividend was working off that $40 per share market value here for the large stock dividend. All we're looking at is the par value per share of the common stock. So $5 par, 120,000 time shares outstanding times the 30% dividend here, that equates to $180,000. So we're just going to transfer that right over here into our common stock par account here. Those 36,000 shares at the $5 par value here. And then the other point is where this is a crucial point here, the additional, additional paid in capital to the common stock here, it's going to get zero. There's no effect here to additional paid in capital of common stock when you're dealing with these large uh, st uh, large dividends here, those dividends above that 25% rate of the uh, common stock outstanding. So here you're going to have no increase in additional paid in capital, only the common stock par got increased here. So the market price on that share of common stock at the time of that dividend uh, that was declared here had no is no factor here when you're dealing with those large stock dividends. So let's just go over this again one more time here. Uh, okay, so again, it does not affect any assets or liabilities here on this large stock dividend, just as it didn't affect anything with the small stock dividend here. And in the 
again, the par value does not decrease here. Just the same par value per share sets here. And of course, we increased the um, par value uh, in your common stock here simply, again, by the par value and the number of shares here that were being issued here uh, in that stock dividend versus, again, with the small stock dividend was the market price. Here it's worth based on the per share par amount here. And then our increase here and the other key point is the number of shares here were increased the number of outstanding shares that was 120,000 sitting there now we had this 30 percent um, dividend here on stock um, large stock dividend here it increased it by 36,000 shares so now we got a total of 156,000 shares outstanding and with our sample uh, example here with the small stock dividend we ended up with a lesser percentage because we had declared a smaller percentage of shares. Uh, declared a dividend with a much lesser percent, 5% versus 30% here. Okay, and again, 30% stock dividend, that was the 120,000 times 30%, that was those 36,000 shares here. So we've increased the number of shares outstanding in both cases, for the small stock or and the large stock. And then the other key thing is here, same as before here, a share early equ equity does not change on the stock dividends. We The reduction of our retained earnings here of 180,000 uh, was Comp uh, was balanced here with our increase here in our common stock plus the additional paid in capital. So we increased our common stock here, 180,000 simply in that transfer. Again, additional paid in capital does not come into play. So just remember that here with the large stock dividend, there's no increase in your additional paid in capital. And you, when you make your transfer or you're transferring from retained earnings to, in this case, common stock, it's done at the par value for this large stock dividend versus the market value for the small stock dividend. And then the other thing we want to talk about is each stockholder maintains, and this is for both any stock dividend here, the large or small, each stockholder maintains ex exactly the same proportionate interest in the company. Number one, the stock issued to the stockholders is on a pro rata basis. Now each, and we're not going to go into all that detail here, but you can you'll the other point is here each shareholder has the same total book value at when they after the stock dividend as before the stock dividend so the stock issued on a pro rata basis just the simple terms here you have a 10 percent of say if the stockholder owns a 10 percent interest they will receive 10 percent of the additional shares and that works out here uh, that they're not going to lose any owner percent uh, based on a percent of ownership in the company or whatever they're going to still maintain exactly the same proportionate interest in the company we don't have to go into all of that here but i'm just this is what's key here on a pro rata basis when they do these stock dividends no one stockholder gets any advantage over the other stockholder they just get the same percentage of uh the, it's based on whatever their ownership is. Whatever their ownership percentage is, that's what they're going to receive in their stock dividend. Okay, so that takes care of our large and small stock dividend. So again, just remember with this large stock dividend, uh, it's done at the par value here. You made your transfer from retained earnings to common stock at the par value, and there's the number of shares of uh, the stock dividend versus the market value here for uh, the number of shares of stock dividend when you're talking about the small stock dividend. And then again, large stock dividends, it doesn't affect your additional paid in capital to your common stock, zero effect here, whereas with the small stock dividend, the balance uh, based on that market value here flowed into your additional paid in capital from whatever par amount here went into your common stock for the small stock dividend the additional amount goes into your additional paid in capital based on the market price here not the par price okay so that takes care of our comparing our small stock dividends with our large stock dividend